um, additional funds raised from that fundraiser will support Redbird Mission directly. Um, a few notes from Christine for you. She is having group voice lessons Thursday evenings through the month of June from 7 to 8.30. She would love to know if you plan on attending. And then also, I'm very excited next week on Trinity Sunday, Christine will be hosting a book discussion over the book The Shack. Um, it's a if you recall, it's a book that was published and it kind of turned traditional views of God and the Trinity upside down. It was a little controversial for some people. So together we'll mine the deep wisdom offered by William P. Young's reimagining in a safe and contemplative environment. That is next Sunday, June 12th from 5.30 to 7.30. We'll have light snacks provided, but again, Christine would love to know if you are planning on attending. Her contact information can be found on the website or you could save yourself the email and just let her know you're coming. I plan on coming. I was telling Christine this morning, The Shack has been on my reading list like since it came out and it always kind of got shuffled to the bottom and I had never read it. So I started it this week and I'm loving it. So I hope that you'll join us. Um, just a few other notes. Uh, Pride is coming up. I mean, it is the month of Pride, but there are a few events we would like to call your attention to. This Saturday from 11 to 2 p.m., we will gather with other Reconciling United Methodist Churches at Bethel UMC. Linworth is very excitedly hosting a reading tent under the theme, Your Story Matters. So we'll have journals and LUMC goodies to pass out, and there are giveaway baskets of progressive Christian books. There's a children's basket and an adult basket. It's going to be lovely. So we hope that you will join us on this Saturday at Bethel. And then also keep your eyes on the lantern for opportunities to join Linworth at the Pride March on June 18th. If you're planning on coming on June 11th and you need company, let me know. Uh, my family will be there. We would love to bring you along with us if we can. Um, the Hilltop Ministry team is seeking adults to be reading buddies for the John Burroughs Summer Reading Program. There is an outside space available if you don't care to be indoors. The month-long program runs from June 13th to July 13th. It's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 9 to noon, but schedules are very flexible for the days and times. Um, it was shared with me that in the past years, we have provided reading buddies for Freedom School and other summer programs. So to assure student safety, adults must complete a background check. If you would like to help some of our young friends in the Hilltop maintain or improve their summer reading skills, please call the office and we can put you in touch with Linda Huffenberger. Uh, and then finally, just so you can get the date on your calendar, the Dublin Silver Band, a, a exciting event that many of you look forward to, the Dublin Silver Band will be providing a concert on Sunday, July 3rd. The hope is to have that be outdoors and have some food trucks available for you to enjoy. Now, if you were saying to yourself, whoa, Pastor Anna, that was a lot of announcements. I got about half of it. Please make sure that you're receiving uh, the weekly Lantern email. Uh, we send out a print quarterly newsletter that should be hitting your mailbox uh, tomorrow if it's not there already. But if we can repeat any of this information or share more details with you, please don't hesitate to call the office. So with all of those announcements before you, I would like to invite you to allow the prelude to prepare your heart and your mind for this morning's worship.
you please stand as you are able and join me in this morning's call to worship? Come, Holy Spirit, with your language of wonder, so we may mingle our words together to scatter the gospel of grace to all around us. Come, Holy Spirit, with the music of your heart, so we may sing songs filled with memories and listen to the new carols sung by children. Come, Holy Spirit, to rattle the windows of our souls, to burst through the closed doors of our hearts and dance with us in the fire of renewal. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, to us this day. Would you join me in our opening prayer? How amazing, Spirit of Pentecost, are the things you do in these moments. You send flames of hope to dance upon those whose hearts are frozen with fear and doubt. You breathe new life into all who have come to believe there is no future for them. You break into our closed off souls to fill us with joy beyond imagination and peace which transforms us. Lead us as we worship and lead us always into new life. Amen. zeal, please turn and share the peace of Christ with those around you. Peace of Christ with those who are watching online.
As we enter into a time of prayer, allow me to share some prayer joys and prayer concerns. We begin with these beautiful flowers, and these are really beautiful flowers. I can't remember the last time I saw an orange rose, and those are given in celebration of Sapphira Hazleton's 10th birthday. So if you're watching, happy birthday from mom and dad and all of your friends here at Linworth Church. The bread and water that you'll see to my far right given to the glory of God, and this beautiful rose here on our communion table, symbolizing another baby born into our faith community. The baby is Brady Daniel Keener, was born a little earlier in May, came a little early, uh, but is doing much better. So we are pleased with Chris and Caitlin, his parents, to say welcome Daniel into our midst. There are some concerns that we want to share with you. Of course, continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and also continue to pray for the victims and family of the Uvalde, Texas school shooting. There are some losses in our faith community that we hope that you will lift up in your prayers. The family of Susan Marsh. Susan died this past week and her memorial service will be here in this sanctuary on Friday the 17th. The family of Ed Shinton, that's the father of Mary Horrigue, and the family of Marianna Moore, and that's the mother of Marsha Wright. There are others in our faith community that are continuing to heal from surgery. Shirley Galloway, Chet Jones, Susan Dean, Stu Schwobscher. We hope that you'll simply lift these people up in your prayers and ask for peace and healing. I'm now going to ask you to turn into either your bulletin, if you have one. If not, it will be on the prayer concene, and I will ask you to join with me in our prayer of confession. Could we pray together, please? We look for tongues of fire to dance upon us, God of Pentecost, but hold only the ashes of our broken promises. We long to speak simply and clearly so that everyone everywhere might understand your love for them. But we scatter our words to the winds with our inability to care for others. We want you to show us the secrets of the kingdom, never noticing they are revealed in the songs of children, the memories of older folks, the dreams of the young all around us. Have mercy on us and pour out your spirit, God of amazing days. When we pull the shutters of our souls shut, fling them open with the breath of wonder, when we turn out all the lights and huddle in the shadows of fear, illumine our hearts with the dancing flames of the Spirit's joy. When we find it impossible to come up with the language of love, pour your word, Jesus Christ, into our emptiness so we may fill others. Hear now the good news for us. God pours the Spirit upon us in these moments, the Spirit which comforts us, which encourages us, which transforms us through God's grace. Thanks be to God. The Spirit brings us peace, comforts our hearts, and fills us with hope. We are forgiven and made new. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us. In the stillness of this place, in the busyness of city streets, 
in the joys and celebrations of our lives and in the tragedies and struggles that break our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort those who this day grieve. Grant them the peace that you bring. Stir within us a trust in life beyond death as we ponder the mystery of Christ's resurrection and the hope that we have in new and everlasting life. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen those who are weak. Heal the wounded and broken. Give rest to the weary. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire this warring world of yours to seek peace, to love our enemies, to put away weapons, especially guns, to remember the price paid for our freedom, to care for those who served. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and ignite a fire in our bones, a fire for justice that cannot be quenched until all your children are loved, until no one is marginalized or oppressed, until everyone has the opportunity to thrive, until this world is transformed and renewed by love. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive this, your church. Liberate us from our apathy. Inspire us for the vision of a world that Christ's life given to us all. Help us to recognize gifts for ministry and to use them in service of your creation. Transform our hearts, our minds. Fill us with love that overflows and remind us that there is no greater calling than to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Come, Holy Spirit. Gracious God, give us a glimpse of your kingdom emerging around us and drawing us into the new things that you are doing in this world. It is for your kingdom that we pray these prayers that we have given, filled with the Spirit, asking you to bless us each this day. Amen. As we continue in worship, I invite you to a spirit of prayerful reflection about the ways that God might be calling you to give, not only of your resources, but also of your very self, your gifts for ministry, as Pastor Jean just prayed in the service of God's love in the world. We are not passing the plates. However, there are uh, offering boxes in the back of the sanctuary as you leave. The one on the left is for uh, normal giving, but the box on the right you'll see is indicated for the Johansson Fund. And if you are new to our community, the Johansson Fund is a fund that we most often bolster with a special offering on communion Sundays that is meant for the purpose of supporting our neighbors. And I'll just say in this season of our uh, larger community and a lot of the financial realities of many, the Johansson Fund is being used. Uh, most often we are using it for rental assistance or uh, assistance with a utility payment so that a person or family doesn't have their utilities shut off. So we are utilizing that fund and we are grateful for your faithfulness in giving. So as the offering music is a gift to all of us, so may each of us be a gift to God's spirit in the world.
join me in prayer. As you would transform our doubts and set us free from our fears, so we pray that the gifts we offer might bring hope to those who despair, might feed those who hunger for hope as well as food, and might gather them into your community of wonder and joy. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. The scripture lesson today is taken from Acts, the second chapter. Hear these words. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and prophetites, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of wonder and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But there were others who sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. 
But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel, who said, In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Before I begin with our sermon, I have one announcement I forgot that comes with good news or bad news, maybe, depending on your opinions of things. Uh, but this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we will be hosting here in the Worship Center a question and answer session on the state of life in the United Methodist Church and what that means for us at Linworth United Methodist Church. And this comes after the conclusion of our annual conference session, which has been held uh, fr Friday and Saturday of this previous week. So Tuesday at 2 o'clock, you can join us here, get any of your questions answered. We will also be live streaming that as well. Now the good news, or bad news, depending on how you look at it, I'm not going to presume to know your opinions, is that one of the pieces of business at annual conference is the fixing of our pastoral appointments and you are stuck with all four of us for the next year. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll get uh, Pastor Anna, Pastor Jean, Pastor Sarah, if she ever decides to come back from vacation, and uh, Pastor Brooke will be with us again. So we are so honored to be your pastors in this new annual conference year. I know I've regaled you with some of my uh, college tales, but... During my freshman year of college, I spent a lot of time getting to know my roommate's family pretty well. She and I, uh, the summer before our freshman year, had attended Buckeye Girl State together. Were any of you Buckeye Girl State or Boy State participants? Oh, yay. That makes me happy. I was the mayor of my city. It was a really easy job, setting the bar real low for the rest of my life. Uh, but she and I were in the same city at Buckeye Girl State, and then we sort of accidentally came to discover that she and I would be returning from Buckeye Girl State on Saturday, doing our laundry, packing up, and then uh, attending and participating in the same chrysalis flight the next day. Uh, so we got to know each other, and then we requested each other as roommates. Um, now, her mom was very different than my mom as far as parenting your college-age children. My mom loved her children. I mean, obviously, parents love their children more than anything. But my mom had the approach to college of, I'm going to drop you off on move-in day, and I don't want to see you until Thanksgiving. She believed in forging your new relationships at college wholeheartedly. And I am confident now that I'm a mother that she bowled the entire way home. But she told me, at least, that she didn't want to see me until Thanksgiving. Now, my roommate's mother... She had a very different philosophy on life with college freshmen. I felt like at least once a week, my roommate's mom showed up in our dorm room with food or clean laundry or baked goods. I wasn't mad at it because I, I love to eat her cookies. But her mom only lived 20 minutes away, and she was just always, always coming. This also meant, though, that my roommate went home a lot. I wasn't mad at that my freshman year either. I got our room to ourselves a lot. But I was very fortunate in that she took me home with her on a few occasions. The first time I set foot in her parents' home, I, maybe unsurprisingly, was waited on hand and foot by her mother. Her mother's name is Deb. 
I never once got up from the table. Deb brought me drinks and snacks. She cleared my plate and my glass from the table the moment I was done. It was such phenomenal hospitality. And then this happened the next time I visited too. And when I humbly thanked her again for her care and her hospitality, she laughed and she said, don't get used to it. I was very confused, but then she continued. She said, you get to be a guest in my home twice. And on the third time, your family, you can get up and get your own drink. I was a bit taken back by her sentiment, but as it turned out, the third time I visited their home was when our entire dorm building and all of campus for that matter needed to be very quickly evacuated. If you'll recall, this was in the winter of, it was 2005 then, yeah, 2005, January, February, I don't remember what month, but it was the ice storm. Do you remember the ice storm? I don't know if in Columbus you guys got the ice storm like we did in Northwest Ohio. But we all had to leave. There was no power. They didn't expect for power to be restored for days. And so we quickly packed up necessities and headed to Deb's house. Pause that thought. We'll come back to it. Throughout the month of June, we will be guided by the lectionary, a predetermined set of scripture lessons, and we will ponder what it means to be home. It is our hope that this season might be one where we really do our best to think about our place, not only in this community of faith at Linworth United Methodist Church, but to also think about our place in the bigger family of faith that is discipleship of Jesus Christ. If you've been around for a while, you'll hear a call to being your fullest self in this home. And if you're newer, you will hear about a welcome that, while not perfect, is broad and heartfelt. In today's scripture lesson, we hear of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the disciples. The writer of Acts, and if you'll recall, Acts is kind of Luke 2.0. The, the writer of Acts had highlighted the Spirit's role in Jesus' ministry throughout both Luke and Acts. And in fact, had talked about the anticipation of the Spirit's bestowal on those who chose to follow Jesus. So today's passage is one that is often heard as a vision of unity. But today I invite us to ponder unity in a new way. At the end of Luke's gospel, Jesus had instructed his disciples to remain in Jerusalem until clothed with power from on high. And they are in Jerusalem during the Feast of Weeks, which is called Pentecost. Penta meaning five. And this festival was celebrated on the 50th day after Passover. And though Pentecost was one of three Jewish festivals revolving around pilgrimage, today's story draws attention not necessarily to those who were making the pilgrimage, but to devout Jews from every nation who resided there. At this strange event, you heard Peter speaking to the crowd. He ensures that the, the disciples who are now speaking in unique languages are not in fact drunk, but to explain what's going on, he recites a passage that we would find if we would turn to Joel chapter 2, saying basically that God's spirit used to be granted to individuals of select power, prophets and kings, but now God's spirit will be poured out onto all flesh, regardless of gender or age or social status. A common approach to this passage is that the Holy Spirit, and then by extension the whole of the Christian gospel, is said to restore the unity that was lost among the different people of the world at Babel. And while that vision of unity is certainly appealing, we have to think of a key part of this fiery story. Those upon whom the Spirit descends are heard in all the dialects represented by their audience. There is not a common language that occurs in this story. Instead, the Holy Spirit is validating the differences and working through them, not erasing the differences and working despite them. There have been lots of calls and longing for unity recently in the United Methodist Church, certainly in the United States and even in the global community. Perhaps you have found yourself uttering something similar. If we could all just come together blank, 
whatever problem is plaguing us, would no longer be an issue. But this story makes me wonder what unity means for us as people who have made Linworth UMC our faith home. You know, I was appointed here as senior pastor at a very interesting point in our life together. And while I might air a little bit more story than you've heard before, Bishop Palmer was talking with me about this potential appointment. And he let me know that if I was to move here, you were at an interesting point in your life congregationally, having done the work of discerning the congregation's values about full inclusion. He sort of framed it like this to me. Well, elder, because he has a habit of addressing his clergy by our official orders, if this vote passes, he was talking about the reconciling vote, if this vote passes, you'll get one in the W column immediately. And if by chance it fails, well, it clearly wasn't because of any failing in your leadership. And I think that's a pretty lovely situation to walk into. And he wasn't wrong. And while I was and still am grateful for his framing, I want to share with you something that happened to me just before that vote. And again, it might be a little more than you're maybe comfortable hearing a pastor say, but one of the things we learn in local church pastoral ministry is that we should always be aware of the people who right out of the gate want to have an audience with us. And so when I got a phone call of a couple who wanted, quote, just a bit of my time, pastor, I approached it with the necessary caution. But that one dear couple made an appointment to have just that, just a bit of my time, Pastor. And as they came to visit with me in my newly unpacked office, they shared with me that they were prayerfully discerning the reconciling vote that would shortly be taking place. It became clear to me that this couple would likely land on the more traditional side of discernment around human sexuality, but they very kindly, and I believe wholeheartedly, let me know that their decisions had been and always would be based in study of scripture and prayer and their own family understanding. They also shared with me, because they are wise, that they knew that the vote would pass, and that though they might vote differently than what turned out to be a very clear majority, that they were not going anywhere. Linworth UMC is their faith home. It is the congregation in which they had done life for years, and they were not going to let a bit of different understanding drive them away from this home. I continue to be so grateful for their sharing with me that day, and I wish now that I hadn't been so worried about what they needed just a bit of my time for. Because you know what? I'm completely and absolutely unsure of how they voted in that reconciling vote. And ultimately, it doesn't matter. What I do know is that for me, even as the leader of this congregation, they are a couple who has let me know each and every single time they see me how much they pray for me, and I believe them. When there was a piece of congregational history that I needed some backstory on, it was them that I called to share their deep knowledge. They ask about my family, and they genuinely care. When my dad was sick and growing sicker, I knew the offers of support from them were heartfelt. And when my dad ultimately died, the cards, plural, I have received are each overflowing not just with love but with beautiful script expressing their deep sorrow alongside me and my family. Does being at home together mean that life is perfect? Absolutely not. But the value of doing life together in the home that God has called us to means that we are each and all better for it. Now, in the second service, I've asked the praise band to prepare and lead us in what is one of my most favorite songs. It has become a favorite worship song of mine, even though it's not a worship song at all. This song is entitled Crowded Table, and it is written and performed by a band called The High Women. 
perhaps band isn't quite the right word for them because they're more a collective of women who each has her own career in music. The group was founded for the express purpose of centering female voices in the writing and performing of country music, a genre which Brittany McKenna states considers women expendable. In fact, Brittany McKenna writes that in 2015, a radio personality argued that rating-wise, female artists were little more than a decorative garnish atop country music's male-dominated salad. Sure, it's nice to have tomatoes on your salad, he said, but you wouldn't miss them if they weren't there. All four members of the High Women Collective have spoken openly about the gender inequity in their industry, and they hope that their project is a part of changing that. Brandi Carlisle, one of the musicians, told America's songwriter, and I quote, so many young girls and boys out there are being raised the way that I was raised on country music and radio. No matter who you are or what you believe, if you have daughters or girls in your life, if you have a little girl and she's listening to the radio with you, why not stop and ask yourself, what do I want my little girl to know about herself today? Whatever your answer is, check in with what you're hearing on the radio. And if you don't think she's getting the message that she's worthy, then join the, join the High Women Movement and see maybe if you can help us change it. <clears throat> In a separate conversation, another member of the collective, Marin Morris, said there's also the element of four women who have their own solo careers going simultaneously while starting this project. I think people really see how adamantly we are trying to get the message behind the music. We're really taking the time and putting our money where our mouth is and not just talking about the lack of women represented in the music industry. She continues, we're really coming together, finding the time to write this record and make the songs and promote it. I think people are moved by the authenticity and the heart of this project. The members of the High Women differ in age and background and musical genre, even sexual identity, but their diversity lends itself beautifully to an album which focuses on women's experiences of love and loss, of motherhood and relationship, of women who are single and partnered, of women who work domestically and those who have careers outside the home. And in their song, Crowded Table, you hear a powerful call. Carlisle talks about the song as going out into the world and being an activist and furthering causes that will make the world a better place, but still being able to come home at the end of the day and be in my family and be with people that might not agree with me, but in whose presence I can be most fully myself. Maybe the song resonates with me like it did with so many before it won a Grammy for Best Country Song in 2021. Because during the pandemic, what I longed for most were the gatherings around tables and shared meals with the people that I loved and even sometimes disagreed with. And I think the reason the song has become such a spiritual cornerstone for me is that it captures what I believe communion to be. A crowded table set in a broad home. There's room by the fire for everyone, you'd hear the song sing. A place from where we are deployed to go out and take on the world and a safe space in which we're brought back together when the day is done. You know, that week I spent in the ice storm in Deb's home. I think back on it now, and while the first two times I was in her home, it was lovely to be waited upon. I felt most welcome when I was grafted into the rhythm of her family. I cleared not only my plate, but others. I folded not only the laundry of me and my roommate, but also that of the four other students who spent that week-long ice storm at Deb's house. And now that I'm an adult and have a home of my own, I realize what a tremendous stress and inconvenience it would have been to suddenly have an additional handful of quasi-adults in your home but I didn't sense an inconvenience to her at all. She had such joy in her home full of life and of love. That's a Christ-like welcome. Both the times when we are told to come and be a guest, 
and in the times when we are told to come on in and get used to the flow of life together. So welcome if you are a guest in this place. But if you've been here a time or two, you're a part of the fabric of our communal life, your family, welcome home. So let's all join with the Holy Spirit around this crowded table. And as Pastor Jean comes to join me at the table, I'd just like to remind you again that if you're worshiping with us in this space, when the time comes, you will be invited to come forward to receive the elements. You can come via the center aisle and then carefully make your way back to your seat. If you need to remain seated and have us bring communion elements to you, we will. These are the elements to which you might have grown accustomed, that both elements are packaged together. So just a reminder one more time, you'll want to open the bread side first and take the bread out, then turn the elements over and open the cup, lest you end up, as I have famously said, with the grace of Jesus Christ in your lap. And if that happens, it's fine. But most importantly, welcome to this table at which Jesus Christ is our host, and at which all people are welcome. On this day of Pentecost, may the Spirit dance with you. May the Spirit dance with you as well. May God's grace be poured into your hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, to fill our hearts with love. May God's word become your language of praise. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit to, to teach us new songs of thanksgiving. thanksgiving. With a word, you scattered chaos, God of wonder and joy, creating everything imaginable and those things only you could envision. Pour out your breath of life so that we who are shaped in your image might enjoy life within you and your goodness. But we know, oh God, we tried to build a tower to reach those temptations just out of our grasp convinced they would make us happier than your joy. Old men and women, young girls and boys, those we call prophets and those we call meddlers came speaking your words of invitation so we might return to you. But we thought they were drunk or foolish or didn't have a clue as to what was really important in life. So you chose to send us your child who spoke of your whispers to his heart calling us to trust in you once again. With those who dare to imagine your wonder, with those who wonder what is going on, we sing of the thanksgivings filling our hearts. Holy, 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 holy are, are you, God who would gather us. All creation joins in praising you this day. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who sends the advocate to us. Hosanna in the highest. God of every moment, you alone are holy, and your heart, Jesus, comes to bring us new life, new hopes, new spirit. As the spirit rested upon him at baptism, so he calls us beloved. As the spirit accompanied him in the wilderness, so he is with us in moments of struggle. As the spirit anointed him to serve, so he gives us the words to challenge injustice, the courage to resist easy choices, and the determination to be faithful and welcoming all people. And as the Spirit strengthened him to confront the fear of death and abandonment, so the Spirit opens our closed hearts to the gracious news that death is no more, defeated once and for all, by your resurrection love. As we come to this table, we remember the spirit which was poured out at our baptism, the spirit which fills us with new hope and life, the spirit which transforms us into faithful people. And so we share that mystery we call faith. Jesus, Jesus gave, gave us his life. His life. Entering, Entering the, the silence of death, death Jesus was raised as resurrection's new song was sung. Jesus will come, and so we will sing as long as we can with the breath of the Spirit filling us. Once again, as you did so long ago, pour out your Spirit upon those gathered in this place, 
those worshiping online and all who seek your heart as called by you and upon the gifts gracing this table with the bread you feed us as you fed all creation and we can go forth each day to offer hope to those who are forgotten to share joy with all those who grieve and be the words of love for those who hear only judgment and hate with the cup you nourish us as you fill all creation so we can be poured out each day for children bullied and harmed in schools, for the seniors mistreated by society, for the most vulnerable who bear the brunt of all of our budgeting. And when your spirit comes at the end of all time and space, gather us with our sisters and brothers around the table of grace and wonder, where we will be filled with the spirit's breath so we can sing your praises for all eternity. God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. And so with the confidence of God's beloved children, we pray together the prayer that Jesus teaches us, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the bread of life which is given for each of us, for all of us. And this is the cup of salvation which is given for all of us together so that we, being fed by God's Holy Spirit, might be the body and blood of Christ for the world. The table has been prepared for you. Come and dine.
already. Please take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And share in the cup of salvation which is given for you. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the ways that you have nourished us by your word and at this table. May we be refreshed and renewed by your Pentecost spirit to go and be the welcoming presence in your home. Help us to share the love of your son Jesus Christ with each and every person we meet so that each person may be treated like a guest and honored as family. For we are all your children. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able and join us in singing. Whatever your home might look like outside of this place, know that we are each gathered here. Welcome home and go out into God's home to share that welcome with each and every person you meet. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.